Uh, my name is Tim Clark. I'm just a few questions for yourself, Elaine. Uh, I'll just begin with. Uh, we have a few questions from the audience. You say over this last, as part of the registration process, and you know, forgive me for sounding a bit clumsy on this here. I was just brought into this last night. So, as I say, Elaine, I'll ask you a first question. So, uh, have you seen the company incorporate benefits from resource matching within their sustainable and environmental or carbon reduction strategies? Um, yeah, uh, we definitely have, Jim. Uh, Jim, um, as I said in the presentation, companies use the service to help them to uh, reduce costs, develop new products, and also to achieve environmental compliance. But um, additionally, many of them are actually using the service as part of the benchmarking or sustainability targets, and even for their ISO accreditations. One company in the Northwest actually brought us in to do a bit of training with their um, environmental uh, team um, uh, to help them work specifically on key targets that they were that they were aiming for in that year. Um, some of the organizations have to do a bit of groundwork around employee behavior before they can actually achieve resource matching because not everyone in a company will will get it and uh, it, it, it can take a bit of work just to do that behavior change. But other companies use the many pronged approach, for instance, engaging with the RAP roadmap would be a very useful tool for the, for the food businesses, but as well Invest and I have so much other support available. So some companies are actually using a whole range of support to help them to achieve those goals. Um, one particular company that has done that, it's actually not a food manufacturing company, it's actually just within general manufacturing. Um, they were able, over a 12-month period, by using that multi-pronged approach, they, they actually reduced their key wasted resource by over 50%, and this had a significant um, impact on their financial bottom line, uh, because they were obviously buying that material in, they were wasting so much of it in their production process but after 12 months of education, resource matching and working with Invest and I, they were actually able to save that material and uh, have a big environmental impact as well as, as financial. Thanks for, that. Thanks for your very comprehensive answer, Liam, and also for your uh, presentation as well. Uh, Darren, if I can ask you a question uh, on your presentation. You mentioned the hidden costs of food. Do you provide advice on identification of hidden costs within the roadmap? Um, yeah, so sure. So knowing the true cost of food waste um, obviously is really important because you know there are a lot of hidden costs, um, and it's important to obviously surface those to ensure this is given the right priority within businesses. Um, so RAP has some um, detailed research on this from from a couple of years ago. Um, actually, it was specifically for the hospitality and food service sector. Um, but I think it gives a good a good model um, that you can apply in in, in different um, different industries, uh, and that breaks down the total cost of food waste by by cost center, um, and that found, for example, um, you know just in this particular sector, on average, you know waste management costs were only about three percent of the total cost, so that really is just you know the, as I say the tip of the iceberg, uh, the food purchase costs were were over fifty percent, and then labor was over a third as well, uh, and then the rest was sort of a mix of um, you know, energy administration, water transport costs, and so on. Um, so, you know, as I say, that percentage breakdown is obviously not for food manufacturing specifically, and anyway, it's going to vary by business. So, each business should apply the model themselves. But you can certainly take a similar approach, you know, to calculating food waste within your own business. Um, so, it's worth looking at the methodology that was used in, in that report. Um, I don't, I don't know. Maybe we can we can circulate a link to that afterwards. But if not, just search. The true cost of food waste in, in Google. I'm pretty sure will we'll give you will be like the first report on there. Um, the, the approach is really just working out what is your total expenditure as a business by by cost center. Um, you know, which is something obviously most business many businesses will have already. Um, it's useful to know for many other things such as understanding your cost to serve and you know making sure you're you're being efficient and driving value in, in what you're doing. Um, and and then multiplying that by your your yield loss, so the percentage of, of food that you waste out of the total amount of food that you handle and that will give you a good breakdown by by cost center of the, of the true cost of food waste so yeah check out the report um, and you know certainly happy to point you in the right direction towards a, a good methodology to use for that thanks very much Darren I uh, appreciate that um, Elaine I have another question again based on your uh, uh, the presentation you gave earlier how can the Northern Ireland catering and hospitality sector be encouraged to reduce 
and separate their food waste for collection? Um, I, I actually think this question applies to all industry sectors, not just the food sector. I don't think the food sector are particularly um, more at fault here than anyone else um, or the catering and hospitality sector. But I do think that some of the hard work has already been done over the last 10 years in terms of education and raising awareness. However, um, change is always uncomfortable and um, globally we are going through massive change in Northern Ireland and the UK as a whole. We don't just have COVID, we have the climate crisis and we have Brexit, which is all making businesses stop and think more carefully about what they do and, and how they do it, um, particularly when it comes to, to finding ways to save money. Um, I think anyone who watched Dave Attenborough's documentary Extinction on Sunday evening um, will understand just how important it is to act on our behaviour change, not just as individuals, but also as employers, producers and service providers. And I think here waste management companies have a very key role to play and I think very often they get overlooked and neglected in this. But I think they have a duty to be more clear with their customers about the value of segregating resources and offering incentives for that um, rather than um, encouraging them to, to mix their wastes up. Um, and I'm not just talking food waste again, I'm talking about all wasted resources here. Ultimately, it is the producer with our legislation who carries the responsibility for ensuring that all resources are managed on and off site in the best way possible. And the resource matching service, as uh, hopefully you've seen from earlier, and the, the, the uh, food map that, that RAP have, both of these tools are there to help all of these businesses actually do what they need to do. Thanks, Elaine. Uh, I take your point about general waste uh, as opposed to food waste in particular. Thanks for that. Uh, Darren, I have another question for yourself. Does the programme help members review progress against actions on an annual basis? Um, yeah, so, so, to, so to, I guess to fulfil the commitment to, to Target Measure Act that businesses sign up to, um, you know, we ask them to either publish um, their, their data on an annual basis or share it, share it with us confidentially um, using that, that template I sort of uh, I highlighted. Um, and that includes, as, as well as the data, so there are actual food waste figures, it does include a section where they can share details of their target and also the actions they're taking, um, both you know, in their own operations to hit their target, but also any work they're doing across their supply chain or, or potentially with, with consumers as well. Um, so we do, you know, if businesses share that with us, we do go through that with them um, for, for a few reasons. So one is, so that A, we can validate they are you know, following the programme, they are taking actions as, they, as they're committed to doing. Um, secondly, so we can you know, pr potentially provide advice, um, point them in the right direction, um, share, share with them best practice or, or relevant examples um, for their sector. Um, but also so you know, we can learn lessons. You know, sometimes we, you know, we're surprised by some, some of the things we see. There's some really innovative and creative um, solutions out there as well. So it's, it's great to see that. Um, and, and yeah, and during this time, particularly during this this lot this past year, just as an example, you know, we've had a particular focus on helping businesses redistribute more of their surplus food. So there's been, in some cases, more of a um, you know more surplus food um, because because of the challenges this year. Um, but there's also been increased demand, and so we've been trying to work work with businesses to understand uh, and overcome some of the barriers that, that they've been to that. So that's a particular um, you know focus for us at the moment. Um, and you know, and we, and we also encourage businesses to publish their data, as I say, publicly um, through through things like um, through, through things like case studies. Uh, and we can support with that. We've got templates, and we you know we can work with you on a case study. Uh, and I think we've got something like 40 plus um, case studies already on our website, where businesses have publicly reported their food waste figures, and also shared some of the some of the great work they're doing um, to, to to reduce food waste and to tackle it. Um, so those are a great first port of call, um, I think, for 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 inspiration. Thanks very much, Darren. Uh, Elaine, I have a hypothetical question for you. For example, I'm a manager of an off and off license chain in Northern Ireland. How can I best encourage sustainability and collaboration with local breweries? Okay. Um, 
obviously, if this was a real question, I'd want to speak to whoever had asked the question in the first place, just to understand it a bit more. But I guess really what they're referring to is their packaging materials, pallets, plastic wrap, those kinds of things that are coming in from the breweries and really just encouraging them to, to start considering sustainability as a unique selling point as well for their for their brands. Um, and, and it comes back to, to talking. Um, You've, you've got to start the conversation. You've got to really encourage them to understand why you think it's important, not just from an economic point of view, but also from a customer point of view. Um, given, as I've said, the fact that the world has this year woken up to the fact that we are, we're, we're living on a time bomb at the minute with our planet and we've got to start taking action and we've got to start changing the way we're doing things. And I really believe that that's an opportunity for, for, for businesses to engage with their supply chain and to actually get the support and help that they need. Um, again, we can help with that um, and we can help you to tackle the harder things that are happening within, within your business. So if it is a particular resource stream, that that's giving you an issue and you're finding it hard to work with your supply chain on that, give us a shout and we'll see what we can do to help you. And it might even be that that we just refer you on to somebody else. Thanks very much, Elaine. That's great. Uh, and Darren, I have a final question for yourself. In view of the uh, growing rapid evolution of Industry 4 and the fact that uh, the internet's getting into so many areas now, with regard to the internet of things and everything now is down to data gathering and the intelligent use of that data would you have an idea of how industry four implementation could help reduce food waste volumes sure yeah i mean um that's a really um interesting interesting question i think um so sure i think that there's probably a few different ways so i think one one way is um you know, by by having more more sensors, um, you know, on manufacturing lines, for example, um, you know, what we can do is is spot issues earlier. So when there is a problem, for example, that might lead to food food waste, um, those problems can be spotted much earlier, much more quickly. Um, by integrating that data with with the systems behind it, you can also make you know micro adjustments, for example, to to your machines and, and so on. So on a on a sort of day by day basis, uh, minute by minute basis, you can be making micro adjustments, for example, to manufacturing process that might lead to reduced food waste and, and greater efficiency. So I think that's one that's one aspect is um, being able to respond much more quickly um, to to issues and actually correct them, um, whereas previously it would you know it would have been a, a more manual process or been a much longer process. So I think that's one thing. Uh, I think the second thing is maybe more longer term. So by gathering all this data over a long period of time. You know, you can analyze it, you can deploy some advanced analytics on that, uh, you know, to try and actually optimize your processes, optimize your systems so that you can, you know, change change the way you do things and reduce food waste longer term. That's a sort of a more systemic, uh, systemic part of that. And then also, I think part of Industry 4.0, um, you know, are, are other, there's other technologies involved in that. So things like 3D printing, you know, and I don't know what, for example, in the future, how much application that's going to have um, in, in food production. Um, from an efficiency perspective, I, ha I have seen things. I have seen food, you know, um, being used with 3D printers, for example. Um, you can imagine that might be more applicable where there is a high degree of customization required. Um, but again, you can imagine those kind of devices being very efficient um, in terms of material, um, if not productivity, and, and therefore, you know, again, have an application for for reducing food waste. So I think there's definitely a lot of um, a lot of potential potential applications for that. I mean, one thing I would say is, um, but by keeping food waste high up the agenda and making sure that that's understood across the business then when new technologies are being developed or deployed um you know that that application of it can be kept in mind so you know if you if you if you don't raise raise this as a high um you know profile area then the technology will be used for other things and and they won't necessarily keep food waste in mind so i think it's important just to to keep it as a high priority within the business that's great darren uh apologies for putting putting you on the spot there as uh, Industry 4 is still a rapidly evolving uh, concept. But uh, again, thanks very much for that. And thanks to Elaine as well, for, and both of you, for uh, two excellent presentations. And um, we'll try to get through as many of uh, your questions that came in as we could, and we would ho hope you found the session useful and informative. 
If you were not able to get to your question today, we continue to update our energy and resource efficiency support page on investini.com, international synergies and wrap websites. If you want to be notified of the latest events, news and support from investini, then make sure you sign up to our two-minute update email newsletter at investini.com uh, slash newsletter. And that's it for the session. Now, if you have any more questions, as I say, we have another five minutes. If you have any more questions to field, uh, we'll probably have time for one more question, as I said before the 12 o'clock stop. Uh, but in the meantime, I'd like to thank you all for attending and hope you've had, and hope you have a pleasant day. In the meantime, if you have any further questions, please contact Elaine, Darren, or myself at any time.